Okay, right here. I just, I'm gonna, I'm gonna read this to you. This, this, this should make sense. This is, uh, page 12. Why does a dirty throttle body cause stalling problems? So idle loads, defined it for you. Anything that would uh, add a load to the crank and cause an RPM drop, and we have our examples. And then this is what I was just describing to you. The PCM only allows a certain range for all idle load compensation. All right, timeout, drive-by wire systems, throttle actuator controls. Do we have a zero to 100% throttle opening capability by the engine computer? Okay. So why would a dirty throttle body on a drive-by wire system cause problems when the computer has ultimate control? And the answer is, just like an IAC device, we limit how much we'll open and close the throttle for idle load compensation. Is everybody clear on that? All right, that's what we're building into here and then, then we'll go to shop. So the PCM only allows a certain range, and I gave you an example for the, the stepper IAC, 256 possible positions. I know I wrote zero and 255, but you have to count zero as a number, 256. And I said, um, with programming, the manufacturer may only allow a range of 050. I know I gave you an example of 060 for all idle loads. When the throttle body gets dirty, all of the allotted idle counts will be used up, in quotes, used up just to keep the engine idling normally without any idle loads, okay? Once idle loads are added, there isn't enough compensation left to properly control idle speed. You will end up with intermittent stalling problems and DTCs associated with the idle control device. Write that down. What's parts change are gonna do? Idle control valve, fault code. Oh, needs an idle air control valve, right? What did this Toyota get? <laughs> the Toyota got a screw, that's all it needed. Yeah, so on an ETC system, I'm gonna give you this example, an ETC, so that's electronic throttle control, and I know I've been struggling with that acronym, TAC, throttle actuator control, is probably a better one. ETC system, the throttle plate can be controlled from zero to 100%, however, again, idle load compensation, idle load compensation, when your foot is off the gas pedal, you're only given about a 15 to 20% window. Once you get about 20%, that's all you're getting for idle load compensation. Stalling problems, you're gonna end up with stalling problems and, and actually some false codes too. I have seen uh, with this one, let's put a note in here. Um, false, false map and TPS codes. On a drive-by wire system with dirty throttle body, false map codes, false TPS codes. And the reason the map would be involved is throttle angle is higher then normal RPM is lower, or RPM is in a range where we're at idle speed, throttle is higher, computer expects to see map voltage under more of a pressure, and you can get map codes. Next page, dirty throttle body. Same thing we kind of did here. No accessory loads on, all accessory loads on, okay? Look at the numbers, 21%, no accessory loads, 768 is my desired, 788 is my actual, so my RPM and desired look pretty good, but it took 21% to get it there, okay? 21% throttle opening. All accessory loads on, same thing, looking pretty good here, 25%, okay? Desired throttle position, throttle position, about 25%. That's before. What did this car have? This car had stalling issues. There's a, um, a nice YouTube case study on a trailblazer with a false map code right here. I highly recommend you guys watch that. Click on that link, watch it. This is after cleaning the throttle body on this car. When I'm finished, no accessory loads, none. What do we see? 6%. What do we see after? 14 full accessory loads. So if my computer system is limiting on a, on a E ETC or TAC system, 100%, 0%. This is my throttle actuator or throttle body. My limit is around 20% for all of my loads. You guys understand the parallel now to what we are talking about here? 20%. So what happens when we get around 20%? The computer's not giving you any more. 
And what you're going to end up with is intermittent stalling problems. Because at times, my accessory loads will be more than what the computer is going to give us for compensation. And so the car will stall when it comes to stops. Or you'll get false trouble codes. Same thing we saw with this Toyota. They've been doing this for a long, long time. They've changed some of these parameters for us. And now what we'll see on newer systems is it'll actually give me idle load compensation percentage. It'll give us this on newer systems. Let me just show you real quick. So it's actually my, my newest video. Um, I just uploaded it uh, last week, 2014 Chevy Malibu with a P1101 fault code caused by what? 30 throttle body. Just want you to see my scan data here. There's my fault code. Intake airflow system performance, right? You pull up the flow chart for that code and it talks about the throttle body idle, idle compensation. I got some info from the Snap-on troubleshooter. These are my actual live data numbers. It says that the code will set if it's 90% or greater. If no DTCs are set, then verify scanner throttle body idle airflow compensation parameters less than 90%. I was, I was at 79%. Talking about checking throttle sensors one and two, make sure they agree and anyway, this number was not available to us in the past. What is this number telling me? You know that 20% range that I just gave you? That's that. That's how much of that 20% range are we using up for idle load compensation? This is your dirty throttle body data PID. Didn't have these before. And honestly, I still use the TPS as my guide. So let's go a little further. What am I looking for? What am I looking at? I'm doing a TPS sweep test. I'm just making sure that my TPS looks good. I'm, I'm using this in a bi-directional mode for that. Right in this one, that's what's going on here. The computer's opening and closing the throttle back and forth. TPS two is rising, TPS one is falling. That's a design feature with the potentiometer. They do this, they're opposite wipers. What does this tell me about my throttle position sensors? They're fine. Why is this code being set? Of course, I got some help and, and we, we're gonna focus on a dirty throttle body. Oh, I'm measuring boost pressure because the boost and the map sensors were mentioned in this flow chart as far as uh, possible causes. We, we end up uh, taking the car for a ride because I didn't particularly like the boost pressure sensor input that I saw with the car just idling. I know that the turbo is not spooled up at idle and I'm wondering why I'm reading 14.2 PSI of boost pressure and what, what is 14.2 for where we are, that's atmospheric. It was an atmospheric pressure reading. So good stuff that we went through in there. Took it for a test drive and we're looking at those, those things and then we come back to the shop and we really start focusing on our idle load compensation. I just wanna find it. So there we are. Throttle body idle airflow compensation, 79%. Throttle position one, this is at 13%. And so that's not as high as the one I just gave you, is it? The case study I just went over with you guys, I had 20%, 20 to 25% throttle opening for no loads and full loads. And you can hear me talking about that in here. I was surprised to see only 13%. 13% on the TPS, 79% here. We cleaned the throttle body and, and we didn't uh, clean it as well as we should. I, I couldn't really see very well. The camera kind of helped out with that, but um, yeah, we're cleaning the throttle body with a, a, a rag and some carb clean. We want to be careful with your fingers in here. I'm using a bi-directional control with the scan tool when I'm opening the throttle plate. Um, there's uh, many times, many, many times I have opened the throttle plate by hand um, and been okay. But I know some people that have done it and ruined the throttle body. Um, no, maybe not necessarily by opening it by hand, but with spraying too much carb clean or whatever you're using and it getting, getting into the electrical parts of the component. So there's a lot of different ways and a lot of different suggestions people use as far as opening the throttle body. I have done three different ones. One, turn the key on, step on the gas pedal inside the APP sensor, and the throttle plate may or may not open. If it opens, cool, have your friend sit inside with his foot on the pedal and get your scrub brush in there. Keep your fingers out of there. I'd recommend keeping your fingers out of there. If the throttle body doesn't open with the key on and your friend putting his foot on the gas pedal, put the car in gear. Car's not running. Put the car in gear, redo the same thing. Now the throttle plate will open, okay? It's a non-bi-directional way to open these throttle bodies. Clean your throttle body. B, 
conservative in your throttle body cleaner. Don't go crazy with it. So that's two. The third one would be a scan tool in bi-directional mode, command the valve to open, that's what I did. And the last two, my truck and this car, that's what I did. Cleaned the throttle body using the bi-directional tools. I have been told in the past that this thing will cut your fingers off. I have been told by others that no, that is not true. Um, the next time that I play around with one of these, there was a suggestion on this video that a guy said, we'll put a carrot in there and see what it does. I think that's a pretty good gauge as far as will this cut your finger off. Guys, I'm just telling you to be careful here, okay? It's an electronic throttle body. Um, in the past, I have disconnected the electrical connection on them to keep any computer control involved and then I would open it manually by hand and clean it. And I've had success in all of the methods I'm describing. Warning to you. A lot of these cars, after cleaning a throttle body, electronic throttle control, you're gonna have to do an idle, idle relearn. And some of the idle relearn procedures are not fun. Uh, some of the idle relearn procedures require a scan tool that can do it. Just be a, a forewarned that cleaning a throttle body, you may have idle problems that you can't fix when you're done on some of these newer systems. You better make sure that your scan tool has the ability to do an idle relearn procedure maybe before you suggest cleaning the throttle body. In a pinch, I had one case study on, on my premium channel where I had a throttle body that would not relearn after cleaning it. You guys can watch that one too. Long story short, it was 40 miles of driving before it would settle down. 40 miles, not exaggerating, 40 miles of driving before the idle finally settled back down. Uh, what guys are doing on those GMs when that happens is they're reprogramming the computer and do a reflash and that takes care of the 40 mile drive time. Just be careful with this stuff. Clean the throttle body. All right, so we did. I wasn't real, real happy with the, uh, you see the idle reset. That resets that compensation number. And this is still before, these are before numbers. Idle learn reset, so I did that. And when this thing settled back down, we had it running for a while. I took it for one final test drive. Then we looked at our numbers again. 18%, that's with all my accessory loads on. That's with all the loads on. And that's with all the loads off. So we went from 13% down to 7%. And then you see my idle airflow compensation. When you reset that, it goes back to zero. You need to test drive it for this number to come back. And what's this 13% number mean as far as what I did with the car? It's fixed, but what else does it tell me? I think I could have cleaned it a little bit better than what I did. Questions on the idle load compensation. Pretty cool number. Questions on this Toyota on what we did with the, the numbers we were seeing. I'm pretty certain that what this, what we just did with this is going to be a fix. And again, that needs a final lock nut put on it and that'll be okay the way it is. And we'll give it back to the owner. I want to pull that code up real quick. Um, we have some other lights that are on, Nate. Uh, I don't know which ones. Let's do a full code scan again and see what else is in that. 